Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Welcome back to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, Tour America has been in existence for over 24 years, but what is the key to its success? Managing Director Mary McKenna joins us now to tell us more. Mary, it has been a number of years since you joined us on Business Matters. So how is Tour America performing for you? Good morning, Carl. Thank you so much for having me on your radio station. Yeah, well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, We're going to be 25 years old uh, in October. And 2019, would you believe, after 24 years of business, has been our best year ever, our best in turnover and our best in, in profit. So I'm delighted to say the last five years we've continued to grow, uh, grow our margin, grow our business. And, and that's down to a couple of, of, of things, Carl. You know, we gave a really good focus on customer service, being very different, very niche, looking at our net performing scores. How does the customer rate us? What can we do to, to make ourselves better? So Mary, provide us with an insight into your customer-centric approach because I know it is probably your secret sauce. Yes, it is actually. And you know what? I wish some companies would look at it like, you know, some of the big companies would look at it because if you get that right, you know, you you really do have a good business. There's two key things that have changed my business uh, in the last five years. One is staff, having the best staff, having staff that are highly motivated and that they really take care of the customer. And really what we what we do in Tour American Cruise Holidays is hold our hand from the beginning to the end. And that's our touch points and having an office in Orlando and really, really caring about the journey. And, you know, Carl, we don't get everything right. Sometimes we don't get stuff right. Uh, it happens not very often, thanks be to God, but <laughs> that's my job as well. I will ring a customer and say, you know, sorry or whatever. We take 100% uh, accountability, but we really take care of our customer, really take care of them. So uh, I'm very proud of that fact. So what do you do when things go wrong? I think you've got to put your hand up and say, sorry, we were wrong. And it does happen in life. You know, we all make mistakes. Uh, and that's my job as the MD is that's where I go in and say, look, uh, I, I want to keep you as a customer for life. What do I need to do? And, and, and people are very reasonable and we talk to them and we get it right. Uh, You know, it might be something like an airline was delayed for 10 hours, which happens. It it can be out of your control. But at least we're touching base with the customer, listening to the customer. And, uh, you know, and and they tend to always give us a second uh, second chance. And have customers' expectations increased by much over the last number of years? Well, uh, no, I don't think they have. I think, you know, if you're paying uh, money for something, you should get good service. Um, And I think you have to set... As, as a business, you have to set your standards very high. So I, I don't think they have. I want to give uh, exceeding uh, customer service. So, you know, it's, it's a bit like when you buy something and you want really good customer service on it. I think that should be a given. Now, in terms of staffing, you pride yourself on employing the best staff in the industry. How do you go about recruiting those staff and, more importantly, keeping them on board? Yeah, well, you know, you have to have some type of flexibility as well. We have about 75% females that work with us. Probably the average age is about 26 or 27. I'm actually the oldest person in the organization. So it's really understanding, can we have flexible hours? Um, What's important to people? Uh, And we do, instead of staff appraisals every year, we do one-to-ones. Our management team do one-to-ones with each one of their staff. So every two weeks... You know, the staff are spoken to, how am I doing? How can I do better? Does anyone care? And why am I here? So there are four, four fundamental uh, key points that we work around. And it's just making people feel important. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, they have super talent. Everybody has one of a wonderful talent. So as a leader, it's up to us to find that and bring out the best in them. Mary, you've done a great job in building a repeat customer base within Tour America and Cruise Holidays. What do you think the secret behind that is? Well, I love what I do. And uh, I have to say, what you do in private is what you're rewarded for in public. So I think I work really, really hard, much harder probably than anybody else. I'm, you know, I, I constantly study and learn. I uh, study in NLP. I've studied emotional intelligence. I listen to TED Talks and I walk to work every morning, 45 minutes in and home. So I'm constantly trying to develop myself and make myself a better person. And and I really do enjoy what I do. So I'm very passionate, hungry. I, I always want to raise the standards of our business, always. It's never good enough. And I'm involved in so many things, like I'm involved in uh, Dublin Chamber. I'm 
Um, my 11 year old coach, I'm a coach of the soccer team, Beachwood Football Club. I'm on the committee. I do all the gear for 700 children. I'm involved in uh, Old Belvedere Rugby Club. And I'm involved, my mom has very bad dementia. I'm involved in, you know, visiting all the people that are in the home. So I do a lot of stuff. And in terms of Dublin Chamber, how has that benefited you personally and also your business through your involvement with it? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I've learned so much. I've been on the council now for two years. So I work with a great group of people. They really, really are. And it's all about policy making within Dublin. So huge amount of stuff I learn Um you know, they're, there's a, they're a great organisation and uh, and I'm learning more every time I go in. They do a huge amount of training and everything. Um, we have a lot of stuff, though, going on that affects SMEs in Dublin. Um, Carl, we have, you know, rising rates that have just gone up 3%. Dublin City Council voted to raise the the uh, rates in Dublin. Um, you also have, on top of that, then you'll have bid charges which go up. You have insurance issues. So a lot of issues facing retail in Dublin. So I'm glad to be in there, part of it, and, uh, and you know, be part of the policy making. And did Dublin Chamber support the 3% increase in rates? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They, they, they made a statement on it. But again, you know, there's lots of different things affecting businesses. So we just need to fight that battle always. And, uh, you know, and I think the government have a lot to to answer on as well. And, you know, when you look at public liability, um, without going into the name of someone recently, uh, you know, I think they could have acted much faster on why uh, they shouldn't have tolerated that behaviour um, because it's rampant in our business. The, the claim culture is rampant. Now, of course, there's lots been said about the Campo culture here in Ireland. But Mary, what advice would you give to the government in relation to how to deal with this particular issue? I think it's really important, first of all, that they listen. And at the, again, you know, recent recent behaviour issues that went on, they should have reacted so fast on that. That would have sent out a message, we're not going to tolerate that behaviour in government. And, and literally, you know, that was a very, uh, that was a case that was on public liability where they were claiming against a hotel. And that is rampant in Ireland. And I am not happy about how, uh, how, they didn't react fast enough, uh, you know. And I'm looking forward to speaking to some politicians when they come to my door, but they have to start listening. There's a lot of common sense that's, that's lacking in government, I think. Have upwardly only rent agreements impacted and affected your business over the past 24 years? Of course it has. You know, like there's, there's very little that's helping business. So you have to really, uh, really... Um, run a very good business to survive. But let me tell you something, Carl, there's a lot of businesses that will not survive. We're resilient. We've gone through September the 11th. I started another business after September the 11th, cruise holidays. So I run a business that is, you know, retain profits, uh, resilience, um, agile. But not every business can sustain that. So if you look at, there's a lot of businesses closing down that can't get public liability. That's the cost of you know, the, the rent uh, upward only or the rates increase or the bids charges will put them out of business. Now, of course, auto enrolment pensions are coming down the track as well. And it looks likely that before 2030, 6% of your annual payroll will be added on to cover the cost of the pension contribution for the employer. What are your thoughts on that, Mary? Well, I, I, think, it's, uh, I think pensions should be talked about a lot sooner than now, to be quite honest. Um, and, you know, there's a big difference if you work as a civil servant and you work in the private sector. So, like, anybody in the private sector will never have a pension like you do in the civil servant. So I think that needs to be addressed. I think young people aren't thinking about stuff like that, but it's really important that that issue is sorted out. Now, of course, you have been very vocal in recent weeks about rising costs facing businesses, but where do you see the solutions coming from for these? You know, I think it's 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 called agility and and getting rid of bureaucracy. You know, I just don't think I think common sense doesn't prevail. We take too long to do something. We're not acting fast enough. Uh, we let blockers get in the way of everything. Like instead of saying we're going to do this, and, and again, I use the simple case of the recent politician who should have been walked out the door straight away as a message to businesses that we won't tolerate this anymore. But I think there's too much bureaucracy. I think it's, you know, it's too hard, too, you know, we don't make changes fast enough. You probably need some entrepreneurs or, 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 you know, or even, you know, people who make decisions. And it's interesting, you know, I'm part of the Entrepreneur of the Year program, which is fantastic. And uh, one of my colleagues put up a post 
about uh, a 90 year old woman in Limerick and it really upset me and I went actually you know we're not even treating our old people but look at the HSC look at the way it's run look at you know if you go into any hospital and I have an aunt very sick at the moment you go into any hospital you know there are empty beds I mean the common sense doesn't prevail yes we spend 15 billion on the health service we only have 5 million of a population Mary if you went in to take over running the HSE what would you change first? Well okay <laughs> Uh, do you know what? You look at what worked well, and probably, I hate saying this, but I'd probably go and say, when the nuns ran it, what did they do well? What can we copy going back that worked well? Why is it not working now? And make fundamental changes. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't run a hospital, but they say there's a lot of administration. I'm not 100% sure of that, but it's not efficient. It's definitely not efficient. And you can't have older people on beds and corridors, 80 or 90 year olds. And I'm sorry, I've been in hospitals in the last few weeks and Vincent's and Michael's and loads of hospitals still have lots of older people left on beds and it really is not right. We should address that fast. Mary, problem solving, of course, is an everyday occurrence in business. You have 25 years of experience under your belt. How do you approach solving difficult problems? Well, I, I think the first thing is I take action and do something about it straight away. And I think that's the most important thing. It's not, I, I don't put it in, if it's something very serious, I don't put it on a two or three or four year plan. It's about let's, how do we get five simple things that make a difference and change straight away. And it's about consistent, insistent, persistent on it. And in terms of supporting startups here in Ireland, what more could the government be doing? you think you know enterprise ireland are quite good on that i you know i think there's some there's a lot of really good stuff done on that um even on the entrepreneur program there's there's lots of programs that are there so i i think again it's working the most important thing you can do is work with mentors and um you know learn from someone who's done it and it, that that really stands to you when you get uh the experience of someone else what mistakes have they made how do you not make the same mistakes of course, there's two sides to your business, one of them being the US market and the other one being the cruise market. Both of them are yes. growing. Of course, we're living in the information age when information about different parts of the world is so accessible for people. So what's drawing people in your door? Well, we're seeing huge growth in cruises, like it's phenomenal. So again, it's about the expertise of the staff, really directing customers the right way. Because if you book online or you go down, let's say even if you go uh, on a cruise, you go down to Orlando, it's quite complex. There are so many types of cabins on a cruise. There's so many different cruise ships. So you, we're finding the right fit. We've got the right rate for the right customer. The same with Orlando. If you go down to Orlando, you know, we're recommending what airlines, car hire, the attraction tickets. I mean, it, there's so many attractions down there. So you're going to go to Universal. You're going to go to Disney. You might need a car. You might need a transfer. You might go over to the beach. It's not a straightforward. So that's what we do very well. Give very good knowledge. Give expertise on the destination and that we're there. Like, you know, if you experience a problem, you can talk to us anytime. We're 24 hours. I mean, that's, that's a big difference. And in building that expertise, Mary, there must be a significant investment made by yourself in terms of sending staff out on cruises and sending them out to different parts of the States to be able to talk with great expertise about those particular locations. Yeah, so we did. Just in the last three weeks, we've had uh, staff on Princess Cruises. We've had, we have staff right now on the West Coast of the States on an escorted tour. And two weeks ago, we had 10 people in Mexico. So that's part of, we do the training at a certain time of the year, obviously, which is November, December, because it is in peak months for us. But that is really, that's what makes us different. We're very niche. We know the product well. They're able to say, yes, I personally saw that. that you know, and that makes a difference. It's an investment in training, to be quite honest, Carl. Like, so it's just knowing our product very well. It's a bit like if you were buying a TV and you spoke to a salesperson who could tell you it does this rather than someone who doesn't know how it works. Of it course. Makes a difference. So from a marketing perspective, Mary, how important is social media for you? Yeah, so social media, uh, you know, we embraced that years ago. We have a whole team that do it, and it's brilliant for us. It really is, because what it allowed, it's, it allowed us as a company, it's transparency. And for us, uh, we're able to get our product out there, we're able to get our pricing out there, we're able to get our staff story, the company story, but also it gives customer transparency about our business. And for example, even on Facebook, we leave all our reviews up on Facebook, good, bad, and different. 
very few companies allow reviews to to sit on their their social media because they don't want people to know what anybody's saying about them. And FIFA, DC, DC, whatever that one is called, that's fine when you're booking something. But when you're handing over your money, of course you're going to give five star rating. It's when you come back is where we want the feedback. And uh, again, Facebook is very transparent. Google's very transparent. So we like that. You know, you can see, you can talk to uh, other customers. And that is the best form of marketing you can ever do is when someone recommends you. And that has worked very, very well for us. And finally, Mary, what is your outlook for business in 2020? Um, I think we're going to have a tough three years uh, ahead uh, for the next three years. So I'm going to look what what we see is the pattern. So we're we're doing very well. Um, I just think Brexit, everything is happening. Uh, a little bit of uncertainty. So I, if I was giving advice, I'd say, you know, make sure your overheads are controlled. Uh, be prepared. Be resilient. And if there's if there is somewhat of a downturn, be prepared for it and make sure you survive to it. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Mary McKenna from Tour America and Cruise Holidays, and I would like to thank Mary for sharing her candid views with us this morning. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.